This is Seven in National News and in our top story. The UA Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai and Chairman of the Investment Corporation of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum witnessed a signing ceremony between ICD and Mabadla Development Company to establish the Emirates Global Aluminium Company. In the presence of Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces and Chairman of Mabadla, His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The establishment of the Emirates Global Aluminium, a 50-50 joint venture between Dubai Aluminium and Emirates Aluminium, will create the world's fifth largest aluminium producer, with over 15 billion US dollars in assets, after the conclusion of phase two of ML's expansion by H1 2014. ML's current chairman and Mabadla's managing director, Khaldun Khalifa Al Mubarak, will become chairman of the board of the Emirates Global Aluminium Company, whereas Dubal chairman Saeed Mohammed Al Taya will become deputy chairman. Emirates Global Aluminium will build on the success of ML and Dubal through consolidating operations and expanding production capacity. It is expected that the new aluminium production giant will boost the amortization drive in the country by providing 2,000 jobs and some 6,000 indirect jobs by 2020. The Emirates Global Aluminium total employee base is also forecast to reach 33,000. The UA Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, congratulated the UA President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and the people of the UA on the country's achievement by ranking number one in the world in the areas of government efficiency, social cohesion and attitudes and values. He also said that the UA's ranking as the, most, at the, eighth, as the eighth most competitive nation in the Global Competitiveness Yearbook 2013 is a source of pride for the country and the fruits of hard work. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's comments came during a cabinet meeting at the Presidential Palace in Abu Dhabi on Monday, where he attributed the achievement to the persistent efforts of teamwork across the federal and local governments in the country and called for more work to achieve greater progress, as per the vision of the UA President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The meeting also approved the construction of a federal government network with an estimated cost of 250 million dirhams, aimed at providing fast and secure ICT services to government entities, a step that will streamline the process of adopting the M Government Initiative. The Cabinet also approved regulations concerning the anti-tobacco law, including a ban on smoking while driving private vehicles in the presence of children less than 12 years old, in addition to regulations on tobacco marketing, sale and the licensing of cafes, among others. The Red Crescent Authority has sent a delegation to the Philippines to coordinate the delivery of relief assistance to the victims of Typhoon Bopa. The destruction recently hit eastern Mindanao, leaving hundreds of people dead and destroying the homes and livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of people. While there, the RCA delegation will provide food, shelter and materials for thousands of displaced families, all of which will be sourced from the local markets. The RCA is carrying out its humanitarian operation in coordination with the UAE Embassy in Manila, the Philippine Red Cross and the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Starting from October this year, Dubai residents will be able to access all government services by using their Emirates ID, according to Dubai e-government. According to a local daily, My ID is a new initiative launched by e-government in cooperation with the Emirates Identity Authority, which will cover all government entities in Dubai and will include more than 20 government entities in its first phase. The Director General of Dubai e-government, Ahmad bin Humaydan, was quoted as saying that in line with the higher leadership's directives, it has become necessary for Dubai e-government to establish a secure and unified electronic identity to allow easier access to government services through a single electronic identity. He added that services can be extended to include semi-government entities and the private sector. 
Currently, to access government services, customers must pre-register at each government entity to establish a username and a password. Since 2007, over 300 children with congenital diseases have received free heart surgeries as a part of the Nabadat Heartbeat Programme. The initiative is now heading to Sudan, where the DHA cardiologists will perform a series of open heart surgeries for children with the most critical cases, which will be the first country outside of the UAE to receive the treatment. Nabadat is an initiative launched by the Dubai Health Authority and the Mohammed bin Rashid Charity and Humanitarian Establishment to provide free medical assistance, surgery and post-surgical care to children whose parents cannot afford to pay for treatment of congenital heart diseases. Officials reveal that after the workshop in Sudan, the team will also travel to other destinations, mainly in the Middle East, Africa and Asia. We start in a local only in our, uh, our hospital and serving all the needy patients, children with heart problems, either local patients or non-local. Now the target is to be international mission. That's the target. Now that should be an international uh, mission or logo that can serve uh, needy children with a heart disease. And that's the main aim. Is our aim is to serve, is to help. The, the, the children who need a heart uh, repair uh, outside UAE. Now, why Sudan? Sudan is our uh, uh, brothers, our uh, close country that we know them, and there's a good, strong relation between us and between them. And they have the good uh, setup to start like this mission. Now, what I mean, setup, they have a cardiac center that they have a s facilities to do uh, heart surgeries for babies, for, for children. This is a very important project or initiative uh, for uh, UAE and particularly Dubai Health Authority and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum uh, humanitarian uh, and charity establishment to help children having congenital heart disease in the world, particularly Arab world. Uh, we know that there are a lot of children in Arab world uh, need this type of uh, help when we call it surgery or intervention. Uh, they don't have the resources, they don't have the material, they don't have the expertise, they don't have the knowledge. We've been visiting some countries, uh, they have limited resources. Uh, so we have here the, the, the resources, so why we don't go out and help these type of children? As Ramadan draws near, food hygiene is high on the agenda. And over 100 owners of traditional kitchens in Dubai have been given a nine-point plan to follow. Dubai municipality met with caterers and food suppliers on Monday and warned them against unsafe food practices during the holy month. They requested that they appoint approved health supervisors, ensure training and personal hygiene of workers, proper food storage and equipment, as well as maintain a register for raw meat. Kitchen workers have also been told to carry occupational health cards, undergo basic training in food safety, and ensure that vehicles that transport food comply with regulations. Piracy in the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea remains a challenge, according to experts. While the incidents of attacks have fallen, the threats are very real. Shedding light on this is the International Symposium on the Challenges of Piracy in the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea. Organised by the Emirates Centre for Strategic Studies and Research in Abu Dhabi, the platform brought together international and regional experts to discuss issues, challenges and recommendations. According to specialists, while there has been a noticeable decline in piracy attacks from 2012 until now, piracy still poses an ongoing threat to trade and maritime security. In May this year, for instance, 8 million euros was paid to pirates as a ransom for kidnapped Danish and Filipino sailors, according to His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Ahmed Salem Al-Wahishi, the director of the Yemen International Affairs Centre in the Republic of Yemen. They hope through platforms like this, Symposium, they can push for stronger laws. 
First, to enhance the uh, cooperation among uh, the Arab countries uh, dealing with this uh, challenge, uh, to find a way of uh, how uh, to go to the uh, international forums and amend all these conventions uh, so that it can uh, criminalize in a very uh, defined way uh, such an, uh, an act uh, of the pirates and uh, make a, a limit to this thing so that I mean all our uh, navigation carrying all these oil tankers and uh, goods uh, which one third of the goods of the world is passing through the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea uh, can smoothly uh, move around. The symposium today bring a lot of people experience from different countries to discuss this issue and to find how to stop it completely. Uh, I know there is uh, many forces going on uh, even the United Arab Emirates uh, contributed in this uh, efforts with the international uh, community but uh, still there is uh, rooms for uh, more uh, efforts to, 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 do, to do it. Until now, the Combined Task Force 151, or CTF 151, an international response team set up to counter piracy attacks in shipping lanes off the coast of Somalia, has proven effective, while the regional centre established in Yemen facilitates the coordinated efforts and information exchange in the region. However, the rising pattern of piracy acts in Africa is an added concern which experts are studying. In addition to a call for stringent laws that will criminalise piracy, experts say it's also crucial to take into account the root of the problem, such as poverty. The phenomenon is not only just the forces side, it's also the reason why this phenomenon is being uh, created and growing up. Uh, and the United Arab Emirates, they have it, a good experience to also help the countries that uh, uh, the phenomenon is coming from them, like uh, Somalia. Six UA-based mobile application developers were awarded with the prestigious App Idol trophy this morning at the Global App Summit in Dubai. Industry insiders at the two-day event stated that there are approximately 62% of UA residents who have a smartphone and that in every household you'll find more than 10 electronic devices. Due to the rise in power of both the mobile app and technology industry, the Dubai government entity Dubai Small and Medium Sized Enterprises recently launched the Seed app to help support and empower the growth of the sector. In addition to this, organisers of the summit, the SPI Group, created a platform where aspiring app developers were honoured for their creations in six different categories. The Arabic app, lifestyle, gaming, infotainment, Rise SME and business. Walking away as one of the app idol winners was Elsa Babic, who invented an app for professional mothers who aspire to work, play and live. We got, I think, around 70, 80 plus submissions, uh, out of which we were shortlisted 40, then we shortlisted 9, and then the final uh, 6 were given. First of all, Pro Moms is a mobile application focused at connecting uh, professional moms with businesses to find jobs, whether they are looking for full-time, part-time, or freelance uh, jobs. They can go to our uh, work section because uh, Pro Moms focuses on work, play, and live. So the work section focuses on the jobs, so uh, we offer them uh, a work-life balance. Uh, we have also the play section, which gives them entertainment information, whether they are looking for quick recipes, 30-minute recipes, book reviews, anything related to fun. Uh, the live section is more focused on daily uh, life information, health tips, uh, if you are not confident to get back into the workforce, we have some tips for them. So anything related to building up their confidence. So that's mainly our focus. It's a great opportunity to network with other uh, mobile application companies and developers and see how they are promoting their um, brands. So our main focus is to network and see how we can promote uh, our brand and reach out to all these moms out there. 
Meanwhile, on the sidelines of the event was an interactive element which had local developers pitch their ideas to investors. And if their mobile app was feasible, the investment capital was provided on the spot. If you look at a lot of local app developers, they say that, you know, they're not sure whether their idea is going to be monetized, right? So there are a lot of challenges when it comes to, and then some people say that, you know, there are only X, 3, 4% of the apps do succeed, right? So uh, we wanted to connect them with the investors and make them understand from their point that when they are putting money or investing money on a particular app, what are the do's and don'ts? Right, and if these people get some kind of a funding opportunity, uh, now right now I was uh, the government of Dubai has announced Seed App Initiative, where for the local app developers they are going to give away I think fifty thousand dirhams or something, you know. So that's that's the whole idea to try to give them confidence that look you are on the right track. And finally, looking to other news now, Yas Waterworld Abu Dhabi is looking to break the current Guinness World Record for the world's largest swimming lesson. The water park is inviting individuals in the UAE to take the plunge and sign up for a free swimming lesson on June the 18th to try and break the record. The global event for the most attended event hosted at a single venue, which attracted 24,873 participants last year, is also looking to smash its own record while simultaneously spreading the message that swimming lessons save lives. Participants registering for the world's largest swimming lesson will receive their free lesson in the park's Amwaj pool. Participants will also be able to enjoy two to three hours of free access to Yas at Waterworld Abu Dhabi's amazing selection of rides, slides and attractions following the main event.